Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the next effort was given by a scientist named Whittaker and Whittaker's classification was based on the correct basis and that is why this classification of life forms was accepted. So what was the basis of Whittaker's classification? Now, Whittaker said that it is not possible to classify so many organisms based on one particular characteristic. Because what did Aristotle do? He tried to classify all life forms based on habitat, which was not possible. And that is why it was not correct also. So Whittaker, what he did, he said that he chose some two, three characteristics based on which he classified life forms. So what were, what were, what were Robert Whittaker's basis of classification? One was cell structure. What do we mean by cell structure? That means the way the cell is organized inside a living organism. That means whether it is a prokaryote or it is a eukaryote, whether the cell organelles are distinctly present or the cell organelles are haphazardly meshed up inside the cell. The second was body organization, how the body is organized. If we all know that the body is com composed of cells, but how the cells are organized to form the body, that is different in different organisms. For example, in case of complex multicellular organisms, the cells will together form tissues and tissues will form organs and organs will form organ system. But that is not true in case of small organisms like bacteria, right? There are even some organisms where the cells are organized to form tissues, but still the tissues do not form organs. So the body organization is also different for different organisms. So he took body organization also as one basic characteristic for classification. And the third one was mode and source of nutrition. That means in order to leave for every living organism, its basic necessity is food. So Whittaker said that how the living organisms get their food and what kind of food they feed upon, that is also one parameter to classify the life forms. So together with these three parameters, he classified living organisms into five groups. So now you understand these three characteristics together will constitute the basic characteristics. That is the cell structure, so how the cells are organized, how does the cell look like? So that's what I was telling, right? So what is the basic thing in any life form? The basic thing in any life form is cell. Cell is our building block. So the classification should also be done based on the cell, right? So that is what Whittaker did. He took cell structure as one basis. He took body organization. Body organization was again dependent on cell. That means how the cells are organized to form the body. And the third one was mode and source of nutrition. How do the cells inside the body, they receive their food. So Whittaker's basis, may, he, he gave entire focus for the classification on cell. So at cellular level, he tried to... Um, take out some characteristics based on which he classified the life forms. So all living organisms were broadly classified into five groups termed as kingdom. So each group is was given a term called kingdom. So what were those five kingdoms? And that is why it is also known as five kingdom classification. So it is it, it became popular later and that then it, it was popularly known as Whittaker's five kingdom classification. So what were those five kingdoms into which the entire life forms were classified? The first one was Monera, the second one Protista, third Fungi, fourth Plantae and the last one Animalia. So right now the names might be very fancy for you but as we go ahead we will discuss about each of them in very much detail. Right? So these were the five groups in which he classified all living organisms. Now, can you tell me what were the reasons why Whittaker's classification became successful? The first reason was that he took into account all living organisms into these in these five kingdoms, which I have listed on the screen, 
everything was included be it plants be it animals be it the microorganisms be it birds fishes human beings everything was included in this five kingdom classification so that was one reason that was one success the second thing was that for Whittaker, the basis of classification was the most basic characteristic of every living being. And the most basic thing of every living being is cell. So Whittaker gave a lot of importance on the cell structure, the cell organization to form the body and the mode and source of nutrition of the cells. And that is why the classification was proper. We were able to classify everything under these five groups. And most importantly, third but not the last one, not the least one, that we have so many organisms. I mean, we don't know how many do we have, how many million species we actually have on this earth. But we could just classify them into five kingdoms. So now if we know about the characteristics and properties of these five kingdoms, we can at least have some idea about any living organism that exists on this earth because that particular living organism has to belong to at least one of these five kingdoms and if we have some idea about it, the, all these kingdoms we can have an idea about each and every living organism existing on earth right so i think with this we are clear that in this lesson we are going to study about the variety of life forms on earth how are we going to study about them by classifying them into five different kingdoms so why do we need to classify? Because it is not possible to study about all of them in detail. And also classification will make things simpler. It also helps us to give scientific names to living organisms. And it also helps us to know the evolution of each organism. Right? Now, Whittaker's classification was the one which was the successful one. And he classified on the basis of cell structure, body organization and nutrition. So now we will start learning about each of these kingdoms in detail. So before we get into that, as I said, he classified all living organisms into five groups. Now, even inside each of the groups, all the living organisms which fall under them, they also had certain dissimilarities. For example, remember the example which I gave you when you actually try to arrange your house, what do you do? First, you keep all stuffs related to kitchen in your kitchen. Similarly, you take all stuffs related to your studies to your study room. But after that, what you do? You start arranging your study room separately. That means you keep the notebook separately, you keep your books separately, you keep the eraser separately, the pencil separately, right? So there you need sub-classification. So similarly, in this case also, even though everything was included in these five kingdoms, but under each kingdom also, the living organisms were not exactly similar. They also shared some similar characteristics and some dissimilar characteristics as well. So a hierarchy, hierarchy was formed. How was the hierarchy formed? Under each kingdom, we had phylum for animals. When we talk about animals, so under one kingdom, we have different phylum. Similarly, when we talk about plants, we use this word division instead of phylum. So it, it means the same thing. It is just that the terminology is different. We use the word phylum for animals and we use the word division for plants. So that means under one kingdom, you have many divisions or many phylum. Now again, under one phylum, you have many classes, right? So it is something like this. If this is one kingdom, so under this kingdom, you will have so many phylum. So these are all phylum. So under each phylum, you will again have many classes. Under each class, you will again have many orders. Under each order, you will again have many families. And under each family, you will have many genus. And under each genus, you have several species, long hierarchy, right? So now you can imagine that it was not very easy to classify living organisms. Because as I said before also, I have told this many a times, that the living organisms that exist on this earth, they are too many and they are all very different from each other. So we just can't classify them 
into just five groups and then put all of them under those groups because again under each of those groups there will be organisms which will be dissimilar so again we divided them into different groups we called them phylum so even under one phylum the organisms were quite different from each other so we divided them into classes again under each class they were different so we divided them into order so that is how we received this entire hierarchy so why am i talking about this hierarchy is that as we go ahead now and we talk about each kingdom separately then you will get to understand why i spoke about this hierarchy so let us take one example let us talk of the rose which we see so out of the five kingdoms which i mentioned in the last slide what are the kingdoms monera protista fungi plantae and animalia so now this rose it will belong to which kingdom it will belong to plantae because from the name plantae itself you can guess that this kingdom is going to talk about all the plants so all plants will fall under this kingdom but does that mean that all the plants are exactly similar to each other so even in plants we have so many different types of plants we see small short plants like grasses we should we see long plants like pine trees we see shrubs like roses right so even under that we have so many different types so when we talk about this rose it belongs to a kingdom plantae eh? what is its division even under kingdom plantae eh, we have many different divisions so this rose belongs to the division magnoliophyta again under this there are different classes so the class which it belongs to is magnolia hospita the order which it belong belongs to is roselles the family is rosaceae genus is rosa and species is gallica so what do you mean by different species because for rose also you would have seen that there is not just one variety of rose with plant which is available in the market you have red roses you have pink roses you have yellow roses right not only that even in red roses you have different varieties of red roses some will have less number of petals some will have more number of petals their look and feel will be different right so there are so many varieties of roses available in the market so so that is why if you want to describe about one particular rose plant which you are talking about you need to mention about the kingdom the division the class the order family genus and species of that particular plant only then you can specify a specific plant right so now you understand what does that this each of these hierarchy means similarly let us take the example of mango so for mango also it belongs to the kingdom plantae so it is under the division angiospermum what is the class it is eudicots so it is under dicots the order is sapindales the family is anacardiaceae and the genus is mangifera so again for for in mango also you have different varieties of mangoes available right we have uh, in india we have so many different varieties like uh, uh, alfonso langra and so many others right so for each different variety you will have a different uh, species correct so this this is the significance of the hierarchy for classification of life forms right so this is how the classification was actually done but in this lesson we are not going to talk about each of the phylum under each kingdom here we will only talk about the five different kingdoms we will not talk about the division or the phylum under each kingdom we will talk about them in our higher classes in class 11th and 12th okay so with this i lend out thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again